Hello, beautiful people. Hello, gorgeous people on Instagram. How are you? Good morning. I'm just waiting to check that we're going live onto Facebook as well. And there we go. Good morning, everyone. How are you? My name is Ali Sugars and I am the Motivation Mama. It is wonderful to be here with you on this Monday morning in Rise Up and Shine, a show that I come on where I talk to you every single Monday and share some motivation, encouragement and inspiration with you um, for that you can take away with you for the week ahead and you can you know, use these, these tips and tools throughout your uh, life as well. So before I go any further, I just want to say a very, very happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. Um, we, we're in Australia, so yesterday was Mother's Day for us. If you're watching from uh, the other side of the world, you're probably still today is Mother's Day. So I wish you all a wonderful Mother's Day and just truly, honestly, uh, you know, hope that you all got very, very spoiled and you the love was shared with you. Now, I also want to spend some, send some special love um, and big hugs out there to the ladies whose mums might not be around anymore. My mum is in heaven. So sometimes this day can be a bit of a difficult day for us. So much love to you. And also to the mums who may have lost their babies or their children for whatever reason, they might have angel babies. So much love and, you know, huge hugs goes out to you beautiful mums as well. So let's talk about today the topic that I have today. Now, this is a really interesting one. This is something that uh, I hear a lot from and deal and work with clients a lot about this particular belief. So the topic we're going to talk about today is five limiting beliefs that are keeping you broke. Now, I think that most likely uh, one, all of us have been in, you know, a state of this type of belief before. So I'm going to talk about five limiting beliefs. And what I'm going to do is for each of these beliefs, I'm going to give you a little affirmation that you can use rather than keeping saying this to yourself, all right? So you've probably heard me talk about it before, our itty bitty shitty committee, right? This is our inner voice that tells us, our inner critic that's always telling us things that are bad, things that are bad are happening in our lives, things that you know we don't like about ourselves. So I want us today, we are going to work on not listening to this inner critic, to this itty bitty shitty committee, or as I refer to it as our committee. Okay. So the first belief that we have that I hear a lot is I'll never get ahead financially. Or to put it another way, I'll never have enough money to survive. Now, this is a statement <laughs> that if you are repeating it to yourself constantly what you are doing if you are constantly telling yourself that you you don't have enough money to survive guess what's going to happen you're not going to have enough money to survive because being broke is a mindset right so when you when you think of it this way and this goes with all the other limiting beliefs that we're going to speak about together today as well when you think about it this way um, your subconscious is going to do whatever it can to prove that the statement is true. So if you are truly believing that you, you'll never have enough money to survive, guess what's going to happen? You're putting it out there to the universe. You are never going to have enough money to survive because you're convincing yourself that you know, you're, you're always going to stay in that place now when that's not that's not what you need to do. All right. So rather than, for this one in particular, rather than focusing on on the statement of I'll never have enough money to survive or I'll never get ahead financially and it can of course be uh, you know rephrased in a lot of different ways even I'll just never have enough money instead of saying that to yourself say my life is full of wealth beyond money all right so take the money out of it now, this is, this is really interesting, and you may have heard this story before, but when I became a single mum, when I left my first marriage, I left this marriage with literally $50, $50 in my bank account. I left with two children, I left with our clothes and a little bit of furniture. I did not have a place to go to, 
Um, I did, I had a car, but I didn't have a place to live. So I was very lucky that a friend took me in instead. All right. So rather if I had, if I had continued to look at this reality, because the reality was I had $50 in my bank account. Now, if I had continued to look at that as reality, guess what? That is exactly, you know, I would have seen myself as always broke. Now, I had to take action in this particular circumstance. I went to Centrelink, you know, I was, and I got $200 from an emergency payment. Now that, that might not seem a lot, but when you've got $50 in your, in your bank account and that's gone like that to get $200, was amazing. So what I chose to do with that $200 was, you know, spend it wisely, which we'll get into, but I also um, chose to be really grateful for that $200. It was like, oh, thank you. You know, and I made, and from memory, this is, this is like 20 years ago now, but from memory, I literally made that $200 last about four weeks. It was amazing. So rather than maybe telling yourself that you're always broke or you'll never have enough money, say to yourself, my life is full of wealth beyond money. So I chose to be grateful for the money that I did have. I chose to be grateful for the beautiful friend that took me into her house. I was grateful for my parents who helped um, take me out of that relationship. I was grateful for the fact that we were able to leave with what we did so, you know, it, it's, it's really all in, in how you choose to look at it. Okay, we're going to talk about that a lot today. So I really want you to know, if you, if you are having this limiting belief, I'll never have enough money to survive, I want you to start pointing out to yourself and thinking about all the other ways that you are wealthy instead. All right. So the second one I hear a lot is money is the root of all evil. Now, I hear this a lot. Now, I have been brought up in the church. So this is something that I have, you know, I've kind of almost been brought up with this belief. But let me ask you this, why? Why is money evil? Because what money is, is energy. Everything around us, including money, was created from a thought, was created from energy and this includes money right now it doesn't matter how you believe the earth was created that nature out there was created from energy every single thing around you was originally a thought pattern was originally any energy and someone has gone out and created it and again this includes money so you can choose with this energy what you can now choose is to see it as positive energy or negative energy. So how do you choose to see it? Is it really evil? The reality is that we all need money, right? As I said, I had $50 when I left my first marriage, but I needed money to be able to live, to be able to raise my children, to be able to feed my children, house my children, um, school my children, all of that, you know? The reality is that we do need money to live. So if you're telling yourself that money is evil, every single time that money comes to you, even though you need it, what you are essentially telling yourself is that basically the way it's coming to you is evil as well. So is having a job evil? No, <laughs> because we need jobs to earn our finances, right? Is receiving a financial gift from someone else, is that evil? I don't believe it is. No, because what this is, in this instance, when someone gives you a financial gift, you know, they are wanting to give this to you to share the love with you. You know, it's a gift. So how, how is a gift from love evil? You know, someone wants to help you out. They're giving you your... They're, they're giving you this financial gift. And, and if it's big or if it's small, whatever, it doesn't matter. But how is that evil? I truly, truly don't believe money is evil at all. So instead of seeing it as evil, see it as for what it is. If people are gifting you money, see it as for a gift and be grateful for it. 
you know, be grateful for the way that money has come to you. So instead of telling yourself, instead of this limiting belief of money is evil or money is the root of all evil, however you want to phrase it, you can instead say to yourself, my money is a positive tool that helps me live the life that I desire and that I deserve. So I want to read that again to you. My money is a positive tool that helps me live the life that I desire and that I deserve. It's beautiful. I love that. Now, this one here, this is something, this, this is interesting actually, something that I have uh, a thought pattern that, that has been with me um, in a previous life <laughs> a lot is I'm just not good with money. All right, this is something that I hear a lot people just say I'm just not good with my money if money falls through my fingers is another way I will hear this one uh, stated a lot so with this one we really need to get real here okay we need to look at money versus money in versus money that goes out let's look at it logically how are you working with the money that you actually have this is a choice that we make. So you might be, uh, you know, like watching people around you buy all these, you know, someone might, might buy a new, beautiful new car or, or let's bring it down smaller. Someone might have, you know, these beautiful outfits and you just think, oh, I just, I would really like to, to, to look like her or I'd really like to be able to afford to buy outfits like that. And what happens is, when we have the mindset, you know, uh, it's, it's like comparisonitis, we can often go and buy things that we don't really need, um, you know, and this is the being responsible with money because we feel like we have to, you know, compete or, or be up there with the status quo. When is that really true? Do we really need to be? You know, we've talked a lot about this show on about accepting yourself just as you are the perfectly imperfect you i say this a lot and this we can do this the same with money so here i want to ask yourself i want you to ask yourself are you spending responsibly or when you go to spend this money do you really need you know do you really need to make that first purchase that you're about to make or can you put it to use somewhere else or can you just save it can you just leave it in the bank account for a little while you know savings not evil because money is not evil so your actions in this time your actions are creating your reality all right if you are if you are spending irresponsibly you are creating that that act that reality for yourself so take responsibility for what you're doing. Now, here, I want to say that my dad is a bookkeeper, or he was before he retired. He was a bookkeeper, right? So I'm very, I'm lucky to have had uh, a lot of very, very good financial advice all my life. Now, <laughs> does this make me perfect? Oh, hell no. I have been kind of totally the opposite to perfect a lot when it comes to money. Okay, and I know something irresponsible that I, I have tended to do when I have maybe got in, gotten into a depressive state and I've let my thought patterns, my, my committee um, take over. I will go online and I will do some shopping. Online shopping. Now, let's all be real here. Online shopping is something that has become very easy in the last, particularly in the last couple of years, few years. I will go online and I'll go, oh, I need to buy something to make me feel better. But what I've learned to do now is rather than um, what I, and, and sometimes, look, I'm, I'm going to be like transparent here. I still do this sometimes. When I just get into a bit of a blur, you know, I'm just not feeling very good. I will automatically go online. I'll find an online shop. I have my favorite. And I will go and I'll think, I would like that. I would like that. I would like that. And I will fill my cart with stuff. What I've started to do now is 
it's kind of like window shopping <laughs> is I'll put all these things in my cart and then I'll get to I'll go to the cart to check out and I will really start to to analyze you know and it's like and I can hear my dad in my head almost it's like do I really need that if I buy that is it really going to make me feel better and then I will question myself you know is this really making me um, is this really helping me be financially responsible if I buy these things that I don't really need so rather than telling yourself I'm just not good with money let's look at how you are treating your money and instead use this affirmation I am making choices daily that bring me closer to financial freedom how good is that I love that affirmation I am making daily choices that bring me to financial freedom now you can rephrase these in, in any way that you like but you know they're, they're just really good affirmations now um, I think we're up to I think we're up to number four yeah we're up to number four <laughs> um, another one that I hear a lot is you have to work hard to become wealthy now this is a really interesting one because what I'm gonna what I'm gonna say might sound like a bit of a contradiction um, and while it is true that yes um, we do need to work to earn a living okay we need to have day jobs we need to like me run a business or um, we need to look for jobs when we have this particular limiting belief it's like um, it's kind of like we believe that we need to work ourselves to the absolute bone just for our our bare basics right because we're telling ourselves that we have to work so hard to the point of exhaustion to have the wealth that we desire now that's not true this is where instead we it's, it's best to adopt the kind of thinking to work smarter not harder so this is where time management comes into it so we've just spoken about responsible spending now we're talking about time management right so working smarter not harder and an affirmation that uh, I've got a couple for this one so you can say here you can say money comes to me easily all right now I used to say this is an affirmation that I used to say money comes to me easily and effortlessly effortlessly now I took the effortlessly out of it because I truly because and I've seen this happen is a lot of people will just think that money is going to fall into the lap you know they're just going to be able to sit back do nothing and money is going to come to you now the reality is that that's not true all right so money comes to you if you say the affirmation money comes to you easily you know and you put this idea of working smarter not harder into action it will and remember here you know money is energy so the energy that you, and this is where the kind of the contradiction comes into it the energy that you put in is what will come back to you now again I'm going to rephrase here is that when you are um, you know this is working smarter not harder this doesn't mean that you've got to put so much energy into earning money that you know that you are going to just be totally exhausted and that means that energy is going to come back to you you know what it means is the how do I put it so it's like that the smarter you work the smarter the money is going to come that doesn't even make sense but I know what I'm trying to say right? um, and, and you know this I run a business so this is this is something that um, I I have to repeat to myself all the time because running a business is not an easy thing to do you know and I have had to very much step into the space of working smarter not harder I've had weeks where you know and my partner Craig will attest to this that I have we I've had have had weeks where I have worked for about 70 hours a week to the point of exhaustion but it's got me nowhere instead when I have sat back and I've kind of put into place all these systems that are going to help me work smarter this is when um, taking that positive action and putting that out there into the universe has come back to me so I hope that makes sense I don't I don't quite know that I got that one across the way I wanted to but another affirmation you can use here you know instead of I have to work 
hard to become wealthy is my life is full of wealth beyond money. So again, same as the first one, you are already looking at yourself as wealthy. And it might not be in the way of finances, but it will translate into that because what you're putting out there is what comes back to you. Oh, pardon me. So the last one is I don't deserve money. This is the one I hear the most. Now, you know, this, this is simply not true. Everyone, everyone deserves money, all right? And I'm going to say to you too that if you have this belief around finances, if you have a belief that, you know, you don't deserve money, it's highly likely that you also are translating this belief into other areas of your life as well. So you might think that, you know, you don't deserve to be happy. You might be telling yourself you don't deserve to love or to be loved. Now, let me tell you, every single one of us deserves happiness in life. Every single one of us deserves love in life. And every single one of us deserves money because I'm going to say it again, money is energy. So I want you to remember that you deserve money, all right? So stop telling yourself that you don't deserve it and instead say this to yourself, I'm grateful for everything that I have and everything that I receive. So I want you to, um, you know, and I, I'm just, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back on my notes. I'm going to repeat all these beliefs and then I'm going to, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to repeat the beliefs and then I'm going to repeat the affirmations. So the first one is I'll never get ahead financially or um, I'll never have enough money to survive. The affirmation that you can say to yourself instead is my life is full of wealth beyond money. Uh, the second one, number two, is money is the root of all evil, is the limiting belief you're telling yourself. And the affirmation you can stay and say instead is my money is a positive tool that helps me live the life that I desire and the life that I deserve. Number three, it's just, I'm just not good with money. And an affirmation that you can use here instead is I'm making the choices daily that bring me closer to financial freedom. Number four, the limiting belief is you have to work hard to become wealthy. And the, the affirmation that you can say here instead is my life is full of wealth beyond money. And number five, I don't deserve it. I don't deserve money. An affirmation that you can tell yourself here instead is I am grateful for everything I have and everything that I receive. So I know, I know very much that, you know, as I said, I work with a lot of ladies who, who have these or have had these limiting beliefs. Now, you know, I know that this is going to resonate with many of you watching today on Instagram and on Facebook, you know, or, or if you're watching the replay on YouTube or wherever, it's going to resonate with you, right? And, and these, these thought patterns I know are no doubt having a deep effect on your confidence. Now, how do I know that? <laughs> because I've been there. When I came out of that first marriage, you know, you know when I said to you, I, I chose to look at um, what I did have and be grateful for it, was that easy? No, it wasn't. Did it, was it taking a toll on, my, toll on my confidence? Yes, it was. That's the reality. However, I made the choice to work on myself and work on my confidence. And this is what I would like to help you with. So if you, you know, if you're, if you're having these limiting beliefs and you, and you're really, truly just going enough is enough, Ali, I want to move forward. How do I do that? This is how you do that. I want to extend an invitation to you. I am having my next masterclass coming up, Five Secrets to Awakening Your Confidence. I have one coming up this week and I would love to gift a free ticket to you to come along to this. So if you would like a free ticket, let me know. Um, my beautiful uh, assistant is putting the link in the comments now on Facebook 
And you can also go and get a ticket. Uh, if you're watching on Insta, you can go to the bio, you will be able to get a ticket there. But I would love to invite you to this beautiful masterclass. Um, I get no greater pleasure. This is this is my passion in life, is, is taking women from that place where I was of just feeling that, you know, you're not good enough and, and having these, these financial, these limiting beliefs around money uh, and around other areas in your life to take you to a place where you just feel um, that true, honest to God love for yourself again. So I would love to have you come to my masterclass webinar, Five Secrets to Awakening Your Confidence. Um, book your free ticket at the links provided. So again, Instagram, you can find it in the bio. Facebook, you can see it in the um, in the comments now. Thank you everybody for joining me today. It has been wonderful to have you here with me. And uh, I, I wish you a very wonderful week ahead and I will see you again next week. All right, everybody, bye for now.